Aloha mai kako, a couple of mine, a curtain call, a weekly program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. The latest exhibit at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center Schaefer International Gallery is a joint retrospective of two of Hawaii's finest artists, Marcia Morse and George Woolard. It spans nearly 50 years of work and many different media representing the breadth and scope of these two. Both of them are substantially and significantly represented in the state's outstanding public arts collection. For this exhibit, I was privileged to participate in selecting additional representations of their work for inclusion in that collection as a visual arts consultant for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Ms. Morse was affected by images coming from Iraq and Kuwait beginning in 2004 to the present. Her Woman in Black series is a powerful, important body of work that members of the committee felt belonged in the state's collection. Of the three that were available for purchase, they selected this photogravure and mixed intaglio work entitled Retribution. Note the layers of work and the haunting look on the woman. Now for something completely different, here is a magnificent, delicate, kinetic, mixed media work, Garden Whispers from 2017. That will be enhancing some future legislators or state officials' office. The final selection of Ms. Morse's was this mixed media work, Kipuka na Ano Ano, Seed Sanctuary from 1997. It reminded me of the work of Judy Chicago. The committee recommended five of Mr. Woolard's works, Emergence and Half Dome are earlier pieces of Mr. Woolard's cashew lacquer on lychee wood sculptures from 2017 and 2019, respectively. They contrast and show the possibilities this media, cashew lacquer, available from Korea, imparts. It has a singular ceramic appearance that causes incredulity when one discovers these are wood, not clay. Before he tackled monumental lychee woodworks, Mr. Woolard worked with much smaller pieces. This one, Cloud 5, was also recommended for inclusion in the state's collection. The final one selected was this diptych, String Theory 1 and 2. Actually, the artist sees these as two separate paintings, but gallery director Jonathan Y. Clark and his exhibits coordinator Peter Holland saw them, as did the committee, as a diptych and they were both recommended for purchase by the state. Mr. Clark and Mr. Holland have presented these artists' works in a beautiful, cohesive, and creative way, demonstrating their excellence and aestheticism. When I complimented him, he told me the artwork spoke. I agreed, but mentioned, you have to be able to understand the language and have the ability to listen. Two skills they clearly possess in abundance. Ignorant me, I only knew Ms. Morris as a cogent and exacting art critic. Now I understand where her high standards came from. She has always drawn, but after college, she spent two years in Ecuador, where she learned intaglio printing, dry point, line etching, as well as aquatint. She said, drawing with a pen or pencil had provided a direct response to the intent of the hand and mind, but the material chemistry of printmaking and its sometimes uncertain outcome required a conversation that acknowledged the limits of creative control. This was my new language. As you can see, she understood and spoke it very well. She returned to the U.S. and pursued an MFA at Stanford with the renowned printmaker Nathan Oliveira, where she was introduced to lithography and color exploration. The linearity of the kimono blended well with her interest in papermaking and printing. In the 70s, she started doing intaglio prints with handmade paper. Here is her Grove series from 1978. This intaglio print is called Keiki Oka Aina. It is a 1977 life-size portrait of her then two-and-a-half-year-old son, Daniel. A print of this is already in the state's collection. This is yet another outstanding example of Ms. Morse's exacting passion for line. In the 80s, she began mixed-media handmade paperworks. She called them little tapestries. This is Archaic Landscape, 1981. Widow Queen's Morning Song, 1984. Portal, 1996. Turning the Corner, 1986. Ms. Morse has been exploring the book form as a way to expand an artist's studio work. 
on December 2nd, she will be giving a workshop where participants will be able to create a little library. Contact Peter at MauiArts.org to register or go to their website, MauiArts.org, for more information. George Woolard is an artist who has been working in printmaking, acrylic and watercolor painting, and sculpture in stone, as well as wood, over a half-century career. Here are a few of the latest examples of his cashew lacquer and lychee wood sculptures. Created this year, they remind me of the monumental ceramics of Tochico Takiezo. This one, Tip Top, is smaller than the others, but no less elegant. Like Ms. Morse, Mr. Woolard worked in printmaking early in his career. Roundabout, a water-based 1982 monoprint on paper, has a soft mattress-like texture behind the slashes of color and blue circle in the middle. His stonework, as demonstrated by Interfaces, a 1991 French limestone piece, shows a high degree of creativity coupled with masterly technique. Besides the cashew lacquer and lychee wood pieces recommended for state purchase by the Acquisition Committee, there are three others from his Cloud series, Cloud 11, 13, and 12. This acrylic on panel is called Footloose. It almost dances on the wall and was my favorite of his because of the complexity of the layering and the unabashed energy in it. The back gallery is devoted almost entirely to his watercolors. I'm going to scroll through some of the works on exhibit for your viewing pleasure. I'm going to lay in Solstice from Dan Tepfer and Miguel Zenon's latest CD, Internal Melodies. Enjoy. <laughs> These two artists have also been lifelong teachers at the collegiate level. Ms. Morse as a tenured professor in art and women's studies at Honolulu Community College, and Mr. Morse has taught in schools and universities throughout Honolulu. I want to mention, if you're looking for gifts for that special art lover in your life, this show is a bonanza. You can get a Marcia Morse for between $500 to $1,200, or a George Woolard for $200 for an original watercolor, or only $6,000 for the large cashew lacquer lychee wood sculptures. Such a deal. This joint retrospective continues until December 30th, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and until 7.30 p.m. for select Castle Theater and Yoka Uchi Pavilion shows. There's no admission charge, but contributions are greatly appreciated. It's a marvelous show and worthy of your attendance. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Mahalo for joining in. I'm Paul James Brown, Molly Strong. Ahui ho.